So, Fatia, thank you very much for the introduction, and thank you very much, everyone. I'm happy to see a pretty full room, which shows uh, quite a, little, a lot of interest on, on this topic. Uh, I have a, I'm, I'm talking here representing an FPA consortium with 10 different companies. I'm chairing this at the moment with a, a co-chair uh, from AstraZeneca, Ian Cotgreaves, uh, who could not attend today. Um, before I start with the presentation, maybe because of the discussions this morning, I wanted to make a couple of maybe introductory remarks. We are talking of uh, in, in induced pluripotent stem cells for drug dis discovery and safety assessment. We had lengthy discussions within the companies in, from the FPA consortium, and obviously this uh, very exciting new field, which uh, has developed from the uh, embryonic stem cell research, and then in the last, say, five years from the uh, IPS as research, is very exciting, and I think it will change the, the paradigm of research in, in many, many areas, and is therefore very big. So obviously we cannot tackle every single question in one consortium. So we decided, and I think this is important to note, that we are focusing not on the therapeutic application of stem cells, but on the use of stem cell derived cells as tools for investigation of drug discovery, disease biology, and safety. So there is a different aspect to regenerative medicine where, where also stem cells are quite uh, useful. Also, of course, I will, uh, during the course of my presentation, uh, we, have, uh, this, we have discussed a little bit which air, main areas of focus because, again, there is about 200 different cell types in the body and there is quite a lot of diseases, many of them which are genetically um, caused. Uh, what, when they are called all very interesting, but of course the consortium, even though it's a think big and it's a quite a large uh, uh, project that we are envisaging, still cannot deal with everything. So we have thought of se some areas of focus uh, which I will present in a, in, during this presentation, so for, for your information, of course, but also that we cannot tackle every single disease type and cell type and every question in, in this one project. Having said that, this is a call where we are putting the question. We expect a lot of input from you or from the applicant consortium, and when we write the full project proposal, some things might be adapted, some things might be left out, or some things might be added, but we uh, still uh, we wanted to have a, a first area of focus also to, to help you to, to, to prepare the, the, best, uh, press, the best call, the best application, of course, to, to help this. So, I mean, the questions that were, uh, they were asked is, well, why do we need to do this in a public-private uh, collaboration? I think one of the things is, I think we're talking about new science, I mean, really a new field, relatively new field, and uh, obviously a very big field. So uh, we need a lot of input from many stakeholders, and I don't think any one company, uh, pharmaceutical, SME, or any one uh, academic institution can tackle all this. So therefore, it's quite good to have this. And also, since is this a relatively new area, Area, we can also uh, start, uh, you know, getting the grants to then build up. Of course, we are talking now about the pre-competitive research where the tools are generated and we know what we have in hand. So some of the things that we really think that are very best made or with the collaboration, public-private uh, collaboration, is establishing a biobank with the IPS cell lines of, that will be generated during the project. And of course for this we require a strong link with hospital, patient organizations, and also pharmaceutical industry that has also access to, to human samples from clinical trials, for example. So these, two, these together is, is a, could be a very good synergistic approach to fulfill this, this goal. Also, we would like to uh, make accessible the IPS cell lines that we generate. Uh, the, the, I think this is a point that has been touched upon a little bit this morning. It was useful to have the discussion this morning. The, this call also, we know that there is a lot of efforts in many different areas, in academic labs, in some companies, and also in other consortia to generate IPS cell lines and to generate protocols. We do not want to reinvent the wheel, so for some aspects we might need to generate uh, IPS cells or might be, maybe it's possible to acquire uh, cells for different patient and healthy populations to have the comparison. So I think this is also, again, important because there's some available um, lines or cell lines which can be used and can be incorporated and some might be generated. But again, I think to have a broad coverage of what's available and to start with the, with the best uh, with the best cells would be very good. And uh, of course we can include well characterized response to the drug treat treatment and side effects where again the, the knowledge of the, the 
uh, inherent to the cell lines, but also the knowledge from the pharmaceutical companies who know the compounds and how they act and how they should act or they shouldn't act when we're talking about side effects uh, is, uh, will be very useful. And also establish some standardized biological assays because, of course, for the drug development process at some stage, we need to compare. We want to compare uh, similar things. So it is important that when one speaks about an endpoint that is comparable and there's some, some degree of standardization that we know what we're speaking about. So I think we need to access the, the stem the cell differentiation protocols as well so that we, when we say this is a cardiomyocyte, we all speak about the same sort of cardiomyocyte and are completely different. And also we can address the disease biology and the, the response to the, to the different treatments. Another important point, and it has been raised this question today, this morning, is the communication with other consortia. I will mention that later, but I think this is a very important part. There is, there are a lot of activities ongoing in, in stem cell and IPS in consortia, and I think we will need to capitalize, and we want certainly to capitalize on that, on existing knowledge and on ongoing knowledge. I think this is a, this is a main point. I think uh, from the interests in general, pharmaceutical industry and academia will, will be driving the scientific effort, but of course patient groups, because we're talking about also of diseases and of patient samples, SMEs for the uh, technologies and maybe because they have some access to some cell lines that they might want to bring in into the consortium, hospitals and also of regulators, because ultimately when uh, essays are performed and results are presented to the authorities in, in a regulatory process, we need to have the buy-in of the regulators so they understand which experiments we're doing and what the results mean. So the main objectives of, uh, of our full project uh, would be to, uh, to have the access, I mean, it, it has a little bit to do with that when I mentioned before, to have the access to these uh, cells, they had to be well characterized. We need, we, we want to have a genetic diversity, which will be, had to be uh, with the different healthy populations, but also with different patients, especially with uh, uh, diseases which are maybe genetically driven or possibly. Uh, and then the pharma and academia in Europe can have access to these well-characterized cells uh, to work with. We would like to have optimized and also to some extent qualified and validated essays for predictive uh, toxicity, so for safety assessment in preclinical and clinical, because we're having, we're trying to, I mean, we are going to work with human derived cells. So I think to have the optimized essays that can uh, help us to predict uh, toxicity. Similarly, also to have optimized essays for uh, disease modeling on the compound efficacy. When we know uh, we're targeting a, a given disease that we have an, a, a specific cell type which can be used as a tool to see whether the treatment is uh, suitable or, or efficacious or not. For example, using neurons or cardiomyocytes or different cell types. Again, the areas of focus will come a bit later. Also, we, we think and we, we believe strongly that the, it is important. We're talking about the five-year project with a pretty large budget, which is above, certainly above 50 million euros. So I think it's important that after the five years, this, com this project will continue uh, beyond this funded pro that the, and that the products what comes out of it will be also maintained. So I think we want to we want to encourage to have some central test facility which would be accessible to academia and the FPA members of pharmaceutical. Uh, it will also develop and further maintain uh, the, the banking of the cells, and also it might be used for doing a pre-competitive assessment of small molecules. That means that after we have defined certain cell types and we have defined the characteristic of these cell types and developed some assays that we consider in this consortium to be useful, that this will not only be uh, in the realm of publications, but that also will be a concrete resource for the future. 